How's it going everyone? Once again, welcome back to Tring Shoe Repairs. If you're new here, my name's Dan and this is my YouTube channel. In today's video, it's another multi-job bonanza. I'm showing you a few bits. I do have a big project video I wanted to do, but these few things I really just wanted to show you. So we've got a cowboy boot. I've already started, unfortunately, but we have got a rescue job on some Wolverine boots and also these bad daddy dance shoes. You saw I had these blue ones in a few weeks ago. We're doing something on these. So grab a drink, sit in your favorite easy chair and let's get started. Okay, once again, welcome back guys, good to see you. Now, it's actually a Sunday today. I quite often come in on Sunday just to catch up with a workload, but I have to tell you, these past two weeks, two or three weeks, have been the busiest period for shoe repairs that I have ever seen in my career. I'm talking uh, the past two weeks, we must have done about 200 pairs of shoes, and in terms of a work standpoint, that is a lot to stay on top of. We've been working some evenings and Sundays and such. So it's a bit of a struggle for me to actually make content whilst I'm this busy, but I have a big project video I, I want to start, but I had these few bits come in this week and I really just wanted to throw them together for you. So I'm gonna spend a few hours on Sunday now doing it for you. So let's start with our Wolverine 1000 mile boots. Now they've already been repaired and the customer sent them to me because it wasn't very happy. Now a few of the issues are the heel block. So this is a new repair, right? So it's not very good. The heel block is coming away. The welt there has been all chewed up. Uh, the sole there is a little bit misshapen. You see there's too much of a gap there and it's wonky. So basically what we need to do is strip it all off and just do it again a bit better. It needs a new welt, obviously. Second job, these cowboy boots. Now, unfortunately I've started them already, but what we're doing is, is pegging the waist and just, I haven't shown you a cowboy boot repair on the channel yet, so that's the reason for that. And then last but not least, these bad daddy dance shoes. Now I had some blue ones in from the same studio and everyone was saying, show us the blue ones. And although it's not an amazingly interesting repair, you guys wanted to see it. So I'm gonna show you what we're doing on that. So let's get started. All right guys, so the first thing we're looking at is this Wolverine thousand mile boot. So let's just get the laces out so they're not in the way. Safety first. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just apply a bit of heat to loosen up the glue. All right, so let's see how easily we can prise this heel block off. So you know normally you'll have a heel block that is a stacked leather heel block with a rubber top piece. This is one solid rubber heel block. And we've got screws in there again. recently with these maniacs and their industrial screws they like to put in things but you know ideally that's not the proper job you want to just use buttress nails so we're gonna have to take those out from the inside aren't we with a screwdriver <laughs> unfortunately another thing they've done is glued down the insole on top of these screws it makes them quite tough to get to look at that now, did anybody just notice my footwear as I was stomping my way back to the last tier? <laughs> so yeah, let me take a minute, let me show you. A lot of you guys always say, um, where do I get my shoes, what am I wearing and stuff? You don't want these shoes. So today we have got, there we are, I've got a, a moon boot on and a snowboard boot. So story is, I've actually got a broken bone in my foot with, with the space boot on. Only a small thing, but still enough that I need this kind of cast on so I can let it heal. But when I'm wearing it, it was making me lopsided and it was hurting my back. So I've got my snowboard boot on just to level me up. But needless to say, it's making shoe repairing a little bit awkward at the minute, you know. I'm slower getting around the shop. So the next problem I've encountered as I'm just starting to take the sole off is, so we're taking the welt here, we're taking all of the welt off anyway because this side here is where they've chewed it all up on the stitcher. 
but the welt comes down and then it turns into what's called the heel rand there which is just a uh, piece of leather basically but it's not been glued back on properly or nailed back on but it's also been sanded down to you know within an inch of its life so we're gonna have to make a new one of those as well a new rand here Doing here is just taking the welt off and ready to uh, sew a new one on. And also, do you sell these? You can have a look and sort out your walking stick. Yeah, he's all scary for Halloween. All right, gang. So that's what we look like. De welted. Bit of foam there left to come out so we've got to pop a new welt on that but for now let's look at the next job dance boots right now it's not a particularly exciting job but what we're doing is the bottoms are grippy rubber and the lady wants them to be slippy so we had to come up with an idea of what we were going to put on the bottoms so what we're using is hello what are you doing you've interrupted my filming you look like you're filming yourself god <laughs> damn it can you hear everyone this is kirsty she's ruined everything <laughs> I'm going to put this in the video. So as I was saying, the bottom of these boots is rubber, is grippy, and the customer wants them to be slippery uh, because they're doing um, pole dancing performance or aerial acrobatic. I'm not sure exactly what to be honest, but they would need it to be slippy so it slides across the carpet. And um, so we had to think of what to use. Now we're using, what I've got here is a big bend of shoulder leather. So it's much softer than usual, but it also has this very shiny finish, which is going to be perfect to give us a slippery effect. So. Let's get on with it. I don't know if you guys can hear, but the audio should be much better because I've got myself a proper mic. Look at that. So now you guys can bully me even more when you can hear that I can't pronounce my THs when I say leather. Now, you know, as I'm cutting around these leather pieces, it reminded me of a funny story. And I don't know about you, but I just remember random stories at the strangest times. And this was when I was on holiday, family holiday as a kid in Kefalonia and um, this is my little brother and there was this massive tropical storm outside and we thought we'd uh, dare each other to go out on the balcony and he went out on the balcony he was just standing there in the thunderstorm and, uh, and I, I, I locked the balcony door the big glass windows and thought it was hilarious and then I had to go to the room next door to see my parents they called me for something and I forgot about my poor brother for about 15 minutes. And I came back into the room just to see him. He'd been in the tropical thunderstorm for about 15 minutes. And he was, he was up against the window like this, <laughs> absolutely soaked and scared. And I felt so bad. Okay, so we've glued up our new shoulder leather piece and our shoe. So let it dry and then heat it up and we can stick it all together. And obviously we can't fit this on the press because it's too tall. So we've got to give it a good tap.
All right, job done. So we've got that nice, smooth, shiny, slippery leather on the bottom. So now you can go skidding all over the place. Shall we have a look at the next job? I've got to show you the uh, cowboy boot, haven't I? Sometimes the soles are a little bit tough to come off. We need to release the glue. So we've got some jerk off stripper here. Nope, gotta take the lid off. Come on, Dan, take the lid off. So I'm just gonna pop him on there and it's gonna dissolve all the glue from the factory. So it's just gonna give us an easier time of removing the sole. Now, you guys can't see this, but I've actually got an audience at the minute. There are some people looking through the window, watching me work. Hello. You don't need to look through the window, guys. Just go to the YouTube channel, Tring Shoe Repairs. And with any luck, our soul should release. I release you. Get that straight up. Okay, now a few interesting points. Just here in the arch, we've got plastic pegs. And that's to hold everything in place, uh, you know, because the arch is quite a steep angle. We're going to replace the pegs with wooden pegs just to give it a bit of a more of authentic finish. And also, I've got a shank here that is one hell, I can just pop it out, of a meaty shank. Also gives it a bit of a, um, almost like a fiddle back shape to the waist as well. So we're going to pop that back in and sort the new sole out. Break time, break time, break time, break time. Got myself a donut. If any of you guys are wondering how I stay in such incredible, breathtaking shape, the secret is to have at least one donut a day. At least, sometimes five. I'm just kidding, don't do that. A lot of people say, oh, it's okay to eat that if you go and burn it off at the gym, and, and that is true, but the, 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 the reality of it is I do eat a lot of calories, but it's for the purpose of using those calories as energy to lift weights in the gym, and then using that energy to build muscle. It's not so much a case of going to the gym to burn it off. So we're getting our glue on our sole for our cowboy boot, the leather. Oops, upside down, we're using today is Cobbler's Choice, which is quite a nice sole. It's our house leather. Oops, I completely forgot. Let's get sticky. Okay, so I've got our Cobbler's Choice nice and hot. Cowboy boot. In particular, let's make sure we get the angle of the arch right. There we go. I'm using my curved ended hammer just to make sure we don't get any hammer marks specifically around this waist area. Hammer marks on, we'd have to go and sit in the corner in shame. Can you go see it's night time outside? Yeah, right, that's how hard I'm working. So now we're on to pegging, pegging 101. So these are our pegs, wooden pegs. And now the reason we put pegs in cowboy boots is because the arch is so steep, it's just a little extra reinforcement to stop anything moving around. So what we're gonna do is take an awl, puncture some holes in the leather, and then put the pegs in the holes, soak it with some water so that they all swell up, and then we're gonna sand it all to a smooth finish. Now, what we do is get a block of beeswax, and just pop that on our awl, 
so we have a bit of ease for going in and out of the lever. Right, so if I just grab our other boot so I can reference the pattern that we did. Okay, there we are. Okay, so now they're all in. Like I said earlier, what we're going to do is saturate the pegs and the lever with water, and that's going to make the wooden pegs expand and really grab a hold of the leather. Right, so we've just sanded the pegs down, just applied some dye, just to make everything look nice and uniform after we've sanded it. So we let that dry, and then come back to it. But for now, let's move on to our uh, Wolverine boots, shall we? Okay, we're rolling. Yes, we are. Right then, YouTube squad. So we're back to our Wolverine 1000 mile boots. Got a new welt on there, okay? Uh, now, I actually didn't do the welt on this. My colleague did whilst I was just knocking out other work. So what we need to do is put the heel rand back in there, put some cork filler in there. Now, remember I said one of the original problems was that the um, the tread on the commando soles was on was off-centered. So we're putting the Vibram mini lugs on anyway, but the same principle applies where we have to center it. Now, when we're putting a new sole on a new welt, it's a little tricky to center things, mainly because we have to trim the welt down to recreate the new shape of the, the sole in general. So what I'm gonna do, Ingenious trick. I'm just going to put a leather midsole on first, which is going to make them more robust anyway, but they should be because they're Wolverine boots. But once we've got the midsole on, we can create the proper shape and then it'll make it easier to line up our outsole. So let's get to it. Beautiful. While the glue's drying, let me show you these. Got a nice pair of Gucci loafers we're doing here. When we do these sort of shoes, all there is is a single cemented sole on the bottom. So what we do is we finish the edge of the sole. See that there? Finish it before we stick it on the shoe. Something a little different. to secure our midsole to the welt is just reverse the shoe, put it upside down on the last, and just tap the welt into place up against the sole. All right, 
getting there. So we've got the midsoles on our Wolverines ready for the Vibram 430 to go on. So it's gonna look pretty cool. Just need to heat it up and stick it together. And I will show you how our Gucci's getting along. Here we are, some nice red soles on there and some brass toe plates. All right, so he's nice and hot. Now is the task of lining everything up. Which is quite tricky because it's quite a, uh, it's got quite a curve in this sole. Oh, our boots don't, so we just have to angle it in such a way that it will fit as best as possible. That'll do. Lovely, okay, so now we've just got to work on um, getting the new heels on. We've already nailed on the heel section. We just need to get the blocks on. And then I think we're gonna move on and give some TLC to the uppers on, our, on everything that we've got. So these Wolverines and the cowboy boots. on the Wolverines and we're using, I said earlier, buttress nails. There we go, not big heavy duty screws. This way it's a lot more subtle, makes it easier to repair next time. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not going to lie, I have used screws in before and when we do that it will be, the footbed sometimes is too rock hard to get nails through. Um, but what we will do is use very slim screws drill a pilot hole and then countersink the footbed so everything sits dead flush and it doesn't interfere or destroy the footbed too much. And that's really a last last case scenario. It's usually uh, quite often the case you can just get nails in. I just realized I actually made an error. We needed uh, brass Lulu plates on the end of these cowboy boots. There's actually an alteration to the order. That's why I kind of went on autopilot and missed it. So we're just gonna cut these in, screw them on. Okay, TLC time. So we're just going to do some finishing touches on the cowboy boot, the Wolverine, and actually just the Gucci. It's not finished yet, but I'll show you. Products we're using today, we've got an Angelus shoe polishing cloth, Saphir leather balm, cherry blossom. This is a waxed leather oil. It's perfect for the cowboy boots because they are waxed themselves and then just pure shoe cream. So let's get started. So starting with our cowboy boot. There he is, the finished job. There were the cobbler's choice and our pegs in the waist. So as I said, it's a waxed leather. So we're just gonna use the waxed cherry blossom. Very easy to do this. We can just apply it with our fingers. And what it's gonna do is waterproof it and leave a sort of waxy sheen. I mean, I think this looks really nice when it's on, to be honest. All right, we'll just put him to one side, let him dry, let it cure and move on to the Wolverine. So there's our Wolverine needs laces but uh there we are straight no chewed up well cool so uh now this isn't a waxed leather so we're just going to condition it with some cream we're using the saphir cream saphir leather balm oh now again both of these we can just apply with our fingers it's just a moisturizer now the saphir cream does tend to come out quite runny so you just need to let it dry afterwards but the result you get with it is fantastic it leaves them really soft with a silky sheen. Now remember, you can get all of these on our online shop. Just 
click the link at the top there and then uh, give your shoes some TLC as well. All right, so again, let that bad boy dry. I'm moving on to the Gucci's and I'm not finished for these yet. Here we are, but I just wanted to show you what I'm doing to the uppers on these uh, because they're a strange color. Well, not strange, but a bit of a mix between navy and black. So I'm using navy puro shoe cream and black puro shoe cream. I'm just going to mix the two together. Now these ones I'm going to use polishing cloth because I don't want to dye my fingers because the puro does have dye pigment in it. Which is great for restoring color, but we don't need to restore our fingers <laughs> to that color. Now with the puro, same as the polish, if we let it dry 60 seconds to cure and uh, the solvents evaporate, then we can come back and shine it up. And there we go. Jobs are good and That's our job's done, so let's see what we've done. Cowboy boots, these are fun to work on. So we've done the cobbler's choice leather, uh, full resole obviously with the fiddle back waist, the pegging on the waist, brass detailing on the Svig rubber heel, and of course the Lulu toe plates. I think these have come out really nicely. And of course the Wolverines, our rescue job. Um, remember the welt was all chewed up. So we've done a full new welt on these, and of course the Vibram 430s. So. I think the customer will get 2,000 miles out of these now. So that is it, end of the video. If you made it all the way to the end, congratulations. Give me a like, it helps me with the channel. And I have to say, this is probably the one video where I've been interrupted by customers more than any video I've ever done. It's just that busy at the minute. I even just had a customer leave right this second before I hit record. Now, a lot of you guys like to know the prices of the repairs that we've done. So the rewelt on the Wolverines and the Vibram sole was 200 pounds, and the cowboy boots for the full sole pegging and Lulu plates was Zah. Uh, uh, Cool. can't use my brain, 135. So that is that. And of course, remember, check out our online store, tringshoerepairs.com, if you want to pick up any of the products we use in the videos. And if you have a shoe repair inquiry, message us on the Tring Shoe Repair Facebook page or via the website and we can talk about your job. Now that is it, that's all I've got for today. If you enjoyed this multi-job video, I think you'll enjoy this multi-job video that we did a few months ago, but that's all I've got for you today. I need to crack on with the work, but thank you so much for joining me and I'll catch you next time.